All right, so in this session, we're going to be talking about front stunts and blitzes. Now, like I said last night, we are not a big blitz heavy team. Okay, so you're going to get, for us, a blitz is a five man pressure. We're not bringing what we call overload, we're not bringing six very often. Okay, so you're not going to get an extensive amount of blitzes, but I'll show you the stuff we do and kind of how we do it and why we do it. Go ahead, coach. Just like yesterday, if you have questions, stop me. There's all the stuff we just talked about. All right, so line movements. That's the first thing we want to talk about. We consider line movements to be the first layer of how we're going to get pressure. Okay, We are going to attempt to get pressure with the defensive line before we do anything else. Okay, And the reason is really, really simple. It's safer. Okay, It's safer for us. So what I mean by get pressure with the line if this is the boundary side, we're going to put our joker there, our three technique there. Okay, that's how we're going to present. That's what our box is going to look like in our 425. So the nickel we're assuming is out here. Okay, one of the easy, easy answers we're going to get is a cowboy stunt. Okay, this is what we call canceling gaps. So our Batman is going to step into the B to set that guard, and then he's going to wheel to contain. We're actually going to make him the contain player. Then the joker is going to step to set that tackle, and he's actually going to stick all the way to the A. And we won't bring anybody in the B. That's something we got from Iowa. All right? And it looks like you're saying, well, coach, you're leaving a gap. You're not actually pressuring a gap. But if you think about it, if Batman steps up in the B and goes C, where's the guard go? He's he follows. He kicks with him. Tackle got set by the Joker, right? He vertical set or kick slid back. Now Joker disappears. Their movement cancels one gap, right? So I get three for the price of two. Now what is the Will doing? He's pushing out and he's walling off slants. I don't have to bring him. And when we call Cowboy, we don't bring him. Now, you'll see as we go along, we can do however we want, okay? We can obviously do this. And we can pirate both guys. We can bring that will off the edge. We just don't like getting too many guys out of coverage. <laughs> because again, like we talked about last night, we're not super athletic. Okay? And so the more people we bring and we start sending people through gaps, that's great. We might get hits on the quarterback, but you might throw a slant and we might give a 50. Okay? So we want to minimize those big plays. So that is the first layer of our, of our pressure. So, like I said, that is how we initially want to get pressure. If line movements will get your quarterback moved off his spot, that's another thing we should talk about. To us, pressure is not really how many times you hit him. If he's good, you're not going to hit him a lot anyway. It's about moving him off his spot. Okay? If he's a statue, meaning he's a three-step drop in the gun set up and I'm going to throw from this spot, well, then we're going to move his launch point. We do this, and Coach and I were just talking about this, we do this all the time. We alter the launch point of our quarterback as much as we possibly can because we don't want your pressure packages to know where he's throwing the ball from. A good DC will get to him and move him off his spot if he's in the same spot too many times. If he's a big sprint out guy because he's short, we're going to bring edge pressure and we're going to put him back in the box and make him step up and throw over tall offensive linemen. If he's 6'4 and he wants to throw over the guards and that's his passing lane, we're going to move him off that spot. Here's the other thing. I would encourage you, if you're thinking defense, most quarterbacks do not throw equally well moving right and left. Okay? Some right-handers are really good rolling to their left. My guy was really good to his left. We actually booted him more to his left than to his right because he would force his hips around, and he got really good torque on the ball. Now, his mechanics were awful, but he got great torque on the ball going to his left. He was so-so to his right. We've played teams, we played a kid last year, he cannot throw to his left, ever. He can't do it. When he tries, it, I mean, he's missing all over the place. So where do you think all of our pressure packages came? Our left, his right, yeah? Because he can't escape to that side. So when he would roll the other way, we knew he can't throw anything over 10 yards to that side. So we just quit covering things that were deeper than that, basically, okay? So you can design your first layer of pressure to basically move him off his spot or move him where you want him in a launch point. We're going to dynamically change gap assignments. That's what you're seeing here. 
Okay, we're going to do as much of that as we possibly can. When we get into our booster stuff, which you guys saw a little bit of last night, <clears throat> when we get into this, we're going to leave it just like that. We're going to leave a chasm in the A-gaps. We're going to say, go ahead, run, hand that thing off. Okay, but obviously we're not really, right? We might cowboy over here and then we might double pirate over there. We're just going to close those gaps back down. We're going to dynamically change gaps. Okay, I think the hardest thing, again, I played offensive line. I think the hardest thing about playing offensive line is what I see is not what I get. If what I see is what I get every play, I can block it just fine. It's not an issue. But when it's a three, please God, make it stay a three. If I'm an O-lineman or I'm an O-line coach, if he's a three, please keep him a three. Don't have him be a three and then now all of a sudden he becomes an A-gap player. It's messing with my mojo. It's hard for me to process. So then you flip it around and you talk about defense. That's a great way to take risks without taking risks. You're not bringing a second level player at all. The, I mean, all the time. We screw it up and we're in the wrong gap. All the time. But here's the great thing. You didn't bring a second level player. So what's your will doing? He's going, oh, they were supposed to stick A and B and they're both in the B. And now the ball's in the C. Well, I better go tackle it, right? Oh, well, it's high school football. Half the time our guys don't get in the right gap and the linebacker makes us right. Our Will linebacker, he transferred from, from LA. Very, very athletic kid, okay? Now he's got sawdust for brains sometimes, but he's very, very athletic, okay? So a lot of times we'll say, if it goes to hell in a handbag up there when we're line stunting, make us look right. Go tackle the frickin' ball. And yeah, he's probably gonna get three yards. Who cares? Rinse and repeat, okay? Now we gotta work on that. But that's our first way to get pressure. We're gonna create angles, we're gonna create matchups. This kid for us is not a D lineman. He's not a D lineman, our joker. He is an outside, he's a true hybrid player. So we're talking six foot, maybe six one, 190, 187, strong as an ox, country boy, farm kid, hit you in the mouth, nasty, aggressive, fast, off the edge. When he sticks and comes down here, if a guard pins him, he's pinned. He ain't going nowhere because that guard's 240 and he's 185. But what do big people not like? They don't like small, fast people, right? So we stick him in gaps and all of a sudden he's a free. And if he's a free runner, it's going to feel like we blitzed because his ass comes flying through that A-gap on an ace line movement and all of a sudden, wham, he's on the quarterback right now. And a lot of times we're doing it just because I want to flush him one way or the other. Am I going to lose contain? Probably. But who's the quarterback I'm playing? If he's not a dual threat guy, let's get that little rascal moving. Because if he starts moving, there's a better chance he's going to do dumb things. Right? I fundamentally believe from coaching quarterbacks, the longer they have the ball, the stupider they get. The longer they are allowed to hold on to the ball, the more bad things happen to the offense. Time your quarterback. If you're a defensive coach, time your, your offense's quarterback. And I think what you'll find is when he has the ball in his hands for two seconds or less, he looks like a freaking All-American. When he has the ball in his hands for more than two seconds, he looks like he should get cut. He's awful. That's just the way it is. Sir? Coach, are you running stunts uh, like on first down or are you on passing down? Yeah, no. We're, if, if we think you're a throw first team on first down, we're going to start bringing line pressure quickly. Now, again, there's a lot of ways to bring line pressure. What if I'm in my odd? Because this is how we talked about this last night. My DC would come this way first. Okay? So he'd have Joker, Will, Mike, Star over here. He would bring line pressure out of the odd first. Okay? So this would not be a blitz to us. We would go here, 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 and bring that. Now, is that a blitz? To me, no. That's not a blitz. That's a tornado, by the way. We would call tornado right there. And these three would pull to their gap, and he would jitterbug, and then he'd bring it right through that B gap. And hopefully what happens is kick, slide, kick, slide, kick, slide, kick, kick, pin, open the door, run right to the quarterback. If you're a traditional defensive team, you would say, well, that's a blitz. It's not a blitz till we bring five. That's a line movement. That joker just happens to be three by three. That's a line movement. So people get a little confused. They'll say, oh, man, you guys blitz an awful lot on first down or second. Well... Not till we bring five. If we're bringing four, we're not blitzing anybody. 
we have to be bringing an extra guy. And remember, to me, that joker is a D lineman. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But if you're just saying that you're playing an underfront and you're just stunting to go over, do you guys do that a lot to, like, just for run shut down? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover that here in a minute, but we would stem a lot. Okay, so if we know that you're going to run a lot of power behind your H-back, or in our case our Y right there, we'll do a lot of this. I think that's hard to block, okay? And then we'll stem over to a three and we'll close the B gap on you. The other thing I really, really like is if I know that you're gonna run power, we'll call pirate to the, this is the edge is what we call him. So he'll step and then he'll cross face in the B. And we'll, so we'll basically give up our contained player. Why? Because I know what you're, like you're gonna try to kick out and when he crosses face, you're gonna grab air. And now that power is either cutting all the way back or it's bouncing flat. So if, if you're a big run-heavy team, we'll pick which gap we want to give you in the 40, and then we'll either Buccaneer or Pirate. Pirate means take it dynamically. Buccaneer means go line up in it and put a rock in the river. Just make it so they can't run in that lane, All right? Good question. All right, um, we're trying to confuse the offensive line. I said that, and then we're playing individual strengths. This kid for us um, is going to be 6'4", 230, big kid, long. Hard to reach. He's going to be on the field side because you can't get wide zone on him. You can't get buck sweep very easily. I mean, he's got arms longer than them tables. This kid, no. He's an athletic kid. But if you pound him, you put a tight end in the game, and you bring the mail, he's going to fold. Now, he's going to die with his boots on. He's going to fight, but he's not a big enough kid. This kid, super athletic. Can stick and stem him all over the place. He's a slug. He ain't going nowhere. Okay. He's just not a great movement guy. Now he's strong as a country horse, but he's not going to move gaps very well. So you've got to play to their strengths on that. Go ahead, Coach. <clears throat> okay. Um, we, believe, we believe that this protects our linebackers. So some of that stuff I've already covered, but I'm going to show you real quick, and then we can kind of get moving along here. Um, we think... Line movements let us steal extra players. Okay, so let's say this is the field side over here. Let's just put them in trips over here. So that's the wide side of the field. Just a simple movement right here. If we want to play palms over here, cover two, and we want to play cover four over there, just by virtue of the fact that I played an under front to the field means my mic gets the lineup wider. But then if I start running this game, the mic will line up even wider knowing he's actually that guy. Well, now he can wall three, and I've got three dedicated players. If I want to poach, I can. I can actually get five guys over onto three. I can flood that zone so that you can't get any kind of numerical superiority over there. And it all starts with what gaps do I take up front. Okay, if I'm willing to compromise on gaps up front, then I can push extra defenders into the pass. So that's what that means by protecting linebackers. We are very gap control. I told you last night, we do not two-gap anybody. Everybody has a gap. Everybody takes a gap. That's the way it is. Um, challenge protections. How many different pass protections do the people you guys play run? One, two, three, three. What are they, coach? Roll them off for me. Full slide. Full slide. slide there you go. Okay, and turn back, you know it's coming, right? We got to get over gaps and we're gone. Okay, so really, it's two, right? Because on that third one, you know how your guys are going to react. So they're really living and dying drop back with two, right? Okay, so identify them and figure out where their vulnerabilities are. Here's what I mean. If you're a full slide team, Everybody's going that way. Tailback has to take C-gap. Yes? Are we all in agreement? This guy cannot block that guy. He's going to run his ass over. I'm missing like a bug on the windshield. Yep. Okay. If they're half slide, meaning they're manning up on this side, and they're sliding three away, then that back has your linebacker. So if you 
sell your linebacker blitz, he's going to get in the fit, bail him back out, and then twist those guys. Twists will always beat the man side. So have two or three twists, and you don't need to bring a linebacker. If you bring a twist and send the linebacker, you're going to hit the quarterback. But he's throwing hot. So it's just a matter of now it's bullet for bullet, right? I, if I twist and I send the will, he's getting hit, unless we're just awful. But he's gonna be, we're going to be zeroed out to that side, which means if he gets a slant off, he's going to get it. Okay? So that's what I mean about challenging protections. I don't think enough work is put into knowing what protection offenses are in. That's why we run so much naked and so much bluff and so much G-boot stuff, because if it looks like run, it is run. You cannot, I, I, I love this. I hear linebackers and linebacker coaches all the time. They're like, now what we're going to do is we're going to step up and play the run, but we're going to ID if they're slow to it, and then we're going to know it's a pass. I'm like, that's not a thing. That kid's 16 years old. You told him, guard pulled, fullback came downhill. It's what? Power. Sick him, right? But sometimes it's not. That's not a thing. I think everybody below the age of 30 should be running play action the majority of the time. We run play action and we run quick game. That's really what we run. Now, RPO is our best pass protection. If we throw the ball 25 times in a game, 15 of them are going to be off RPO action. So the, the protection is the run, which you can't pressure. Now, when we play an RPO team, we tell our linebackers, say, Levy, you're, not, you're never going to get pressure on the quarterback. We've got to handle it with our DBs because you're always going to get stuck in the run fit. But there's a, thank God there's not a lot of people dedicate enough time to it. Alleviate pressure on the back end. What I mean by that is we're going to stay in too high a lot, a la taking away their deep shot. The longer we can stay in too high, the less big plays we give up. Go ahead, coach. Okay, we can go linebacker and secondary blitz, okay, and I'm going to show you some of that. Single linebacker blitzes are our biggest component of bringing pressure. We call that fires. Will fire, Mike fire. Mike X means if he's got an open A gap on his side, fire means take your A gap or your B, whichever one's open. X means you take the other linebacker's gap. So if I'm standing there as a Mike and there's an open B gap and coach says Mike fire, I'm running through that B gap. If he says Mike X, I'd have the A gap on the other side. Does that make sense? Not real revolutionary. But our kids have really easy answers. Now, what does the will do? If I get Mike fire, he's going to open, drop, and become the rat. He's got to wall off whatever slants the most threat, okay? Because we don't have any other low player. Um, we, I don't. My DC does a phenomenal job calling single linebacker blitzes with line stunts, okay? And so I'll show you one real quick just to give you perspective on what I mean. He will use the term jack. Jack's a really cool term for us. It solves a lot of problems. Okay, if he calls jack, those guys are taking the next gap out. Okay, they're, they're working to their exterior gap, and the nose always goes strong. So if he calls Jack, Mike X, you just got a double A gap blitz. The Rock took one, and the Mike took the other. One you took with a slow player, one you took with a dynamic player. But the key to teaching this, for those of you that coach D-line already know this, this rascal better not stick that gap and run. Because if he does, they'll change the protection. He needs to take the center's face with him. Right? So if I'm that rock, I'm going to come up and I'm going to get a piece of him and I'm going to take it with me into the A-gap because what am I doing? I'm opening the door. As soon as that, so now I'm the center, okay? Nose goes this way. As soon as I let him drag me, the mic fills the gap. He's coming right off my ass. That's a huge part of being good at pressure is where's your aiming points. If the mic runs through the A-gap, he's not going to get home. He has to run off the center's ass that's disappearing. So his blitz really is going to look like that. I need him to get right down Broadway as fast as he can. And if the nose tries to step it back, or excuse me, the center tries to step it back, then the nose should come clean. 
If he feels the center disappear, it runs straight to the quarterback. And we give them all kinds of rules about how to avoid slip screen and all that stuff. We are going to get our ass handed to us on tailback screen. And every time people do, they get us. Now, we've picked them off. You saw a clip last night. We picked them off. Damn, their house called them. So we will make a call. We have a D-line call. All of our kids will yell it. If they feel like they, they got let go, they yell it, and all the D-linemen throttle down, and they look for the throw. But if we're in this, you can get us. That's a great answer for you is to throw that. But again, how many times do you want to throw it? Because if we miss, we're going to, I mean, that linebacker ain't slowing down. The D lineman will read screen, but if that Mike gets a, call, a fire call or an X call, he is coming through that gap and he is going to run right through the back of your quarterback's life. Okay, he ain't going to slow down. So your quarterback's going to get hit. Okay, so this is what our guy does, and this is a little bit weird. If there's a tight end present, or he calls it a fullback, if there's a fullback present, that's the strength. Done, end of story. No matter what front you're in. But if there's no fullback present, the strong side is away from the back. Away from the back. So if he wanted to call strength right here, if this is the boundary, These are field players. Why, they go to the field. Why are you calling strength away from the back? Great question. Because where's this guy running the ball the majority of the time? That way. That's our strong side. Now, why am I making that my strong side? Watch this. I can get both linebackers to the strong side. Right? Now I can get Mike and Will. Does that make sense? Yeah. I can get Mike and Will to the strong side. You can't cut back. We tell our running back on zone, you're really trying to do that. Well, it's hard now. Cutting back is hard because I've anchored it. This guy's going to play quarterback because he's a five with a three inside. We call it anchoring the back. So this kid's going to get nasty. He's going to sit and box. That ball basically can't get back here now. So I have cut the football field in half, and I've said, you've got to run the ball over here. And you have one, two, three. I have four. If it's pistol, you got to do a better job of film study, right? Um, what he would do if all things are equal and he doesn't know anything about them, but they're in pistol two by two, our kids would call the strength to the wide side. Okay. They'd call it to the field. Yeah, if you see pistol, it's 80% of the time, mm -hmm. I, I love it when people run pistol because to me, the ball takes longer to get downhill. The ball takes, now they would say, we can get downhill. Well, we get downhill with a veer call. We just same side it. But the ball takes longer to get downhill and that's harder to teach. That's why we don't do it very much. Um, I don't think fundamentally you've caused me as many problems as you think you have. Like OCs think they've really become creative by putting him in pistol because they're like, oh, you don't have a strong side. Yeah, I do because 80% of the game's played on the hash. Yeah. So I'm just going to say, fine, run to the boundary. Run the ball in the back, because we tell our kids all the time, the sideline's undefeated. Sideline's never lost, right? You step out of bounds, you step out of bounds. The, the ball stops, okay? So that is the 12th hat, or in your case, the 13th, right? So if we're not sure, overload the field side and make them run into the boundary. Now, we know people do that, so we'll run the piss out of sweep into the boundary. We'll just get into squeeze sets, crack, pin, pull it around there, and just maul you into that tight side of the field because the RPO is over here. So we're going to play games with where you put your nickel, right? So it's all, it's all chess match, right? Um, the, the next thing down there, the very last thing, when we bring secondary pressure, they come from depth. So our guy, especially our DB's coach, he loves what we call viper blitzes. He loves to send corners. And I just tell him, I'm like, don't tell me when y'all are doing that because I don't want to know, okay? Um, every time they start talking about it, they come up with code words, and then I just see it and get really pissed off because I'm like, why are we bringing... Now, here's the thing. You all know this. You bring a corner off the edge, especially from the boundary, it's going to be checkers or wreckers, right? Quarterback doesn't see him, and kaboom! Ball goes flying. Everybody's excited. But 
the next time you do it, some bitch is still running. He's halfway to Mexico right now, right? Because they throw a hitch and it's off. So you're taking a risk. You're rolling the dice. So I just tell them, I'm, I, I don't need to know. I'll just, I'll just get mad later. Don't tell me. Because I'll, I'll tell them no every time. I'll never let them send a corner. So they just figure out to just keep me out of the loop, right? Um, and they bring it when they want to bring it. And I have a few clips of that. All right, next one. So that's all single zone stuff. So here's line movements. We couldn't get all this stuff on one page, obviously. But we tried to give you a little bit of a snapshot. Um, sticking, gapping, shading, lining up, slanting means we're dynamically moving to it. Stem. So he would call, like let's say he'd call Raider under, stem over. So that means line up in the under, and then our mic will go stem, 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 and they'll shift to it over. They'll go from one to the other. Okay? We lo I like that. We don't, we don't use enough. Pinch. Okay? If we pinch both ends, we're going to get into a tight front, a mint front. The nose is always going strong. So he's going to go to the strength. Um, one thing, and then you see our jack movement down there. One thing that we've really figured out, if you want people to stop running inside zone on you, I'll show you a good way to make them stop running inside zone. <coughs> so they're a pistol team, okay? But you want them to, you think they're going to run zone to the wide side. We would call shade pinch. Shade pinch means these guys don't line up head up anymore. They're lined up in four eyes. And now we would call lag. Lag. So now our nose is going to go to the back side. Well, if they were sidecar, this would be the back side, right? So you have to tell them if they're in pistol where the back side is. So he's going to be there, there, and there. Now, you believe what you want, but I'm telling you, I cannot run inside zone to that. And here's why. That's contain, that's contain. That's A, that's B, that's A, that's B. What's he got? He's a free hitter. You can't get to him. Now, if you want to stick around, I won't put it on film, but I'll show you how we're going to block it this year. Because last year, when you did that to us, we quit running inside zone. Now, we figured out an alternate way to block inside zone, and we're going to run it on people that tight front us this year, because I don't like being dictated to. But it's new, so I'm not going to put it on film, but I'll show you at the break. Okay, but what happens is if you're going to try to push inside zone, which all O-line coaches want to push it, they're going to declare this to this. They're going to declare this to this. This guy is supposed to get to that guy. Well, he can't. You cut him off. So when their double team hits and tries to push, that guy runs into a brick wall. And if the quarterback pulls it, you got a free hitter. If he hands it, this kid just stalks him and tackles him. This kid should be a damn All-American. He should never get blocked. And they can't run zone. Now, I will tell you this. You're in some deep shit if they're a gap scheme team. They're, you're in deep shit. Because they're going to run power and they're going to cave that four eye down and they're going to bring the male off tackle. Okay, But... But, how many teams do y'all play that run both zone and gap? And they're proficient at both. If you don't, then you're fine. I'm trying to get my DC to understand he should get in gap, shade, lag, every time you run 10 P-zone. And he's like, well, that's awful predictable. I said, well, that kid's awful unblocked. Just let him run around and tackle things and force him to throw the ball. They're, you're susceptible to wide zone, and you're susceptible to off-tackle power. Other than that, go fight win. You got them on zone. And so if you've got that kind of standard, hey, we just run inside zone, we want to throw the ball off inside zone, you're going to hammer them. You're going to hammer them with that. All right, next one, coach. There's some more line movements. Um, ace fundamentally means he's closing both A gaps. That's all it means. So if you line up in Husky, which is head up, and he calls ace strong, ace weak, two guys are going to the A gaps. We're going to leave a B gap undefended, okay? Now, it's not really because the will has the blue B and the joker has the final C. So it's going to look to you like we stuck into the two interior gaps and there's two open gaps, but there's two linebackers for the two gaps. Does that make sense? Am I speaking, speaking normal? Um, 
Buccaneer means we're lining up in a gap with the 40. Pirate means we're taking the gap. If a joker has a three technique with him and he gets a pirate call, he called, hey, check double, check double. Now we're both going. So we'll take A and B and we'll leave the C gap uncovered. Okay, then this is, this is witchcraft down here. This is voodoo. This is all his stuff. He's sticking multiple gaps. Remember, my DC played D-line. Okay, and he's a big-ass dude, and he thinks his glory days are still there, and he can stick two gaps. He likes to go show them. And it's like watching a nursing home patient get out of bed, right? He's an old man. But he thinks that he can do it. Okay, our kids next year can do a lot of that. We can stick and trade multiple gaps now, and that's going to be our jam. So you can see all the ways we do it. I like this stuff. You take the nose, and he's going to try to work all the way back to contain, and you're going to bring the edge rusher all the way down the A. I freaking love anything where you take a guy that looks contained and wheel him all the way back into an A gap. I love it. And the reason I love it, I played center in high school. So think about this. Snap the ball. Boom, boom, boom. I'm setting back. There's nothing scarier playing interior lineman than the big kid that you think has been smashing you in the face every play gets up and disappears. Okay, and if you ever played offensive line, you know what I'm talking about, because you're sitting back in your stance and you're going, oh, where's it coming from? I know it's coming, right? Because that guy left. So now I'm like, PTSD, right? It's coming from somewhere. I just don't know which side, and you got to get your head on a swivel, and all of a sudden some large, angry individual has got a head of steam, and here he comes. And I face that inenviable task of, can I get my feet over to cover him? Or am I just going to hold him and hope to God I don't get called? But it ain't going to end well. Because O-linemen are never going to be more athletic than D-linemen. If they are, then the guy you're playing is an idiot and you'll beat him anyway. The big guys that can run better be playing D-line. The big guys like me that win bench press competitions but can't run anywhere, play O-line. Right? I was a 350-pound bencher in high school. I can't run from here to that wall in less than 10 minutes. And that's before I had three knee surgeries. I am slow as a seven-year itch. So, I mean, when I played D-line, it was hard to get your ass in that gap and just let people smash you and hold on to two of them while somebody behind you looks athletic. That was my job, okay? As an O-lineman, it was get a hold of him and take his ass somewhere and be nasty with him, okay? It's a different skill set. So when you start telling offensive linemen, Oh, kick slide backwards and then turn your feet and get your head on a swivel. That's not a thing. It sounds great in clinic talk, but it doesn't actually happen on grass very often. Those guys start getting home. So that bottom right hand box, that's the stuff I think you can cause a lot of chaos for the offensive line there, but it's not expensive. That's the real point I'm trying to make. You're not firing two linebackers and hoping to God they don't throw hot. Your linebackers are sitting there matching routes behind it going, okay, chaos is happening. I'm probably going to have to go tackle a quarterback that comes sprinting out of there when it all breaks down. So what? Your linebacker should tackle the quarterback most of the time, unless he's a dude, and then you're screwed anyway. Yeah, Coach, uh, what did your line sense call? So do, do your lineman understand who goes first, who goes second? Like, do you have that mm -hmm. all like, built into it? Yeah, he's got, he's got all these words for it, and he'll tell them. I think it's always, how's he do it? It's always the interior lineman goes first on this set, and it's always the exterior lineman goes first on the E set, but they start or end in different words. And to be quite honest with you, I can't remember what the hell they all are. I just quit listening at that so point. I'm like, I want this. Is your joker always on the line of scrimmage or is he back? No. If we're odd, he's off. Okay. If we're even, he's closed. He's up. Um, when you're teaching to contain to your nose, are you just like teaching him to get his ass out there as fast as possible? Yeah. So if, now let's, let's be clear on what we mean by contain. The defensive coordinator thinks that means contain. I mean, please get close to contain, because you ain't never going to get contained, right? So if this is the offensive tackle, okay, and I'm a nose trying to get to play contain, I would contend it's never going to happen, okay? We don't tell the kids that, but it ain't going to happen. So I'm picking that backer and coming around. I'm going to dip and rip, and I'm going to try to go behind the offensive tackle. I'm not going out here. Because if I go out here, one of these guys is going to pick me off. So it's almost like find space, get vertical? Yes. I'm going to try to play contain behind the offensive tackle. Right? If I don't get there, why did I not get there? Because you're fat and slow. I'm fat and slow. But the real reason, 
is on my way there, the tackle goes, this is some weird and just slams the door on me because I'm slow. Well, now what's the tackle done? All offensive line play should be played with my hips parallel to the line of scrimmage. I just committed cardinal sin number one. There's an edge. So when the ball gets here, however it gets here, and it bounces, if your linebacker can't... So let's think about this. That lineman, I see the nose going, and this tackle slams the door on him this way. And they're like that, and now the ball bounces. Well, for God's sake, tackle him. Now again, I say that with an awful lot of clarity that doesn't exist in the 16-year-old mind. So would you, would you give your nose the freedom to, like, say he actually reads that tackle from the slam on him to be able to cross space? Yes. Okay. Now again, you're, you're talking about an athletic movement by an unathletic individual. <laughs> but if he gets a down block, we say, come on around. Bring, just keep ripping and riding and get to contain. Yeah. But you've created abject chaos. The other thing I'm going to do right there is if you do that more than about twice, and I know that's your answer, that tackle blocks down on the nose right there, I'm going to call that line movement, and I'm going to tell the will to crush is our word. So he's going to walk up, and he's going to come off the C gap like a bat out of hell. Because if I know your tackle, so I'm the tackle now, okay, and this guy's leaving, and he's coming, and I'm closing the door on him, will fire right there. I'm going to bring the will off the because this kid is going to hit your quarterback. He'll get there because he's athletic. Sir? One of the issues we have in Canada, though, is that we have to start one yard off the line. Uh -huh. And then you also have lines that will bow their tackles. And sometimes they've got a two-yard advantage yep. right? versus your sense. What would you recommend? For I think this is better for you than it is me because our biggest problem with these line stunts is our Nimrods get too close to the offensive lineman, right? They're, we have a very liberal interpretation of neutral zone in the States, right? Like it's, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're there. And so what happened, we are always telling our kids, if you're running the line movement, cheat back just a hair. Don't make it obvious, but cheat back a little bit, which lasts one time for two inches, and then they're right back up there, right? I think you guys have a better line stunt game than we do because of the yard. I would be, if I was coaching in Canada, coaching defense, my guys would be dealing every play. Every offensive line coach in Canada tells, her, uh, is tells them, don't let them cross your face, and it's a damn lie. The guy's got like a, a yard gap on him. There's no, you, that guy's crossing your face. He's crossing your face. I would, I would never get in a pass lane and rush because the offensive lineman, by the fact that the, the tackle's bowed and there's an extra three feet of space, I mean, you have to suck to not be getting a piece of that defensive lineman if he's on a one-gap stem. Like, you got to be awful. I mean, I'm 41 years old, and I could do that, for Christ's sake. Okay? But when they get a running start and they start twisting, what do offensive linemen want to do? They'll back up faster because they're all the same. Okay? They're going to go, ooh. And I've, we teach it to an extent. If things go bad in front of you, get away from it. Let it exchange, which is a good answer because the odds that I pick up the stunt are higher. But what am I doing? I'm collapsing the pocket faster and I'm bringing the momentum of the D lineman. They're picking up speed, right? Drop of tennis ball from two feet versus drop it from 20 feet. It's faster, right? So use it against them. Tell your offensive line or your defensive lineman, you don't have to start deeper. Your first step is upfield and you just start going now. You're going to get ahead of steam. And the odds that we're going to collapse that pocket are higher. And I, I don't think in the Canadian game, the secondary, I don't know, you guys have to tell me, I don't think secondary, second level blitzes are probably as effective because I do have that further I have to disguise. But line gaps with a, with a, defense, with a linebacker blitz should work really well, well, well because the linebacker's late. We're also talking about a field that's 15 yards wider. Right. right. So yep. that is very hard to do. You're not disguising many corner blitzes. Okay. So this, to me, in your game is the pressure package. I'd play coverage behind it and I'd just go. Good stuff. So single linebacker blitzes, we already talked a little bit about this. Fire means you're coming from your gap. X means you're coming from the other side. Um, I want to keep going so we can get the film. Go ahead and roll that one, coach. Zone blitzes, um, I think we all understand what zone blitzes are. Now we're getting into five. Okay, we're bringing, we're bringing pressure. 
for our guy, they're all one word calls. So if he wants to bring five, it's one word. And it's strong or weak. Like one of them is punch, one of them is um, crush, one of them is Omaha. Like he's got words for them all. Okay? And that way our kids just have to know is it strong or is it weak? Okay? But this is what I think is the big coaching point. The D linemen initiate the, the zone pressure. They take the gap they're supposed to take. If they miss, the linebackers are told, you make the D line right on the run. So if I'm a nose and I'm supposed to be taking strong A and I don't get there, and I'm a linebacker, I'm supposed to be taking weak A, I'm going to take strong A now. Linebackers can be wrong. D linemen are never wrong. They're never wrong. So they go, and if they miss and they end up in the wrong gap, linebacker, that's your fault. If they run the ball, that's your fault. You're supposed to make them right. This sounds bad, but I think you've got to assign blame. I think you have to assign blame every time you do something complex in football. Because otherwise, you get the, it was his fault, right? And I don't want to hear all that. No, it's your fault. Because I told you all week, your job is to close that gap. I don't care if he screws up, you close the gap. Go ahead. There's a bunch of his zone blitzes. Punch, okay, punch X means the linebacker's coming off the other side. Belt, belt X. And again, I can send you all this because obviously we won't get enough time for us to break every one of these stunts down. If you want it, I'll just send you the whole presentation. He only carries about four true five-man pressures into a game. There's not very many of them. But what we have found, and maybe we're just bad teachers, the more of these we run, the more we screw them up. If we carry six or seven in there, we end up with three guys clogged in a gap, and they hand off zone, and they, they gash us. We can't carry too many zone pressure. Our kids just don't process it well enough. And we are playing a lot of coverages, so it's just more and more and more they got to know. So we try to confine ourselves to about three to five zone pressures a week. And there's weeks where he'll run punch, but he won't run punch X. He won't even work on it. Or he'll run punch X and never run punch. So there's really eight there when you go strong and weak, but he's not. He's, done, he's only going to run certain things certain ways. Just cuts down on the teaching. Go ahead. Secondary blitzes, there you go. Um, again, we like, I don't know if in the Canadian game, we already talked about the size of the field's an issue. There's a lot of that. That bottom right-hand corner, if I ever see that, everybody on the defensive staff's getting fired. I can tell you that right now. Their ass is walking home. They ain't riding home on the bus I paid for. Jesus, H. Lord. Yeah, just be done. Um, so I told him to show all the ways we can do it. Um, that bottom right-hand corner, that, mm -hmm, uh -uh. but the bottom left-hand corner, we'll do that. Coming off number two, he can get there. He can get pressure. I really like bottom or top right-hand corner. Top right-hand corner is a good one because tight ends don't fit in the protection very often in the States. Okay, they're usually a receiver that they want to get the ball. So he'll leave, and that corner comes off the edge, and he's got a short angle, and he just obliterates that quarterback. So the top two, we would use a lot more than the bottom two. All right, next. All right, so again, layered system, start at the front, work to the back, got to be multiple. You have to be inexpensive when you blitz. You can't have a lot of moving parts. Merge it with the coverage. We do not bring pressure until we ID what coverage we're bringing it out of. If you are a pressure guy that does not solve the back end, you're playing with fire, in my opinion. You're going to give up big plays. And then you got to change the picture. That's where the X stuff comes in and where you're bringing pressure from. Go ahead, coach. Is that the last one? Yeah. Okay. Let's go to huddle real quick. So he just, I told him, I said, you know, it's, we're not going to have a lot of time. So there's a few line movements for you. That kid number six is lazy. He should have came. You see how slow that is? Play that again. Yeah, he's, his first movement's up, right? He's not going to get there. Now, the other kid does a great job. See him take the center's face? He damn near makes the play, and he's the one that's not supposed to. But Captain Lazy Ass next to him doesn't, doesn't work through the A-gap. That's a little better, but still, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, he's wasting space, right? He's just wasting space. Look at that. And two of their linemen don't block anybody. We got what we wanted. It's just... Technique-wise, we're not, we're not getting there. There you go. Cut off that gap. All right, so there's a couple line movements. You get that. Go ahead and get out of that one, Coach. 
Okay, let's go down and grab, we can go second, yeah, let's go single linebacker blitz. There you go. Let's watch a few of these. Again, I've got these broken into zone pressures, single linebacker pressures, secondary pressures, line stunts. Again, I'll send them all to you if that's what you want. Now, is that a blitz? Nope, that's a line movement because we're only bringing four. But to that quarterback, did it feel like a blitz? He felt pressure. Same thing. Now, why do I like that? Play that one again. What I like about it, they're, we're making them waste their back. Pause it right at the start of the play, right? Pause. How many are they protecting with? They're protecting with six. They're keeping their back in because they don't know where that line game's coming from. Well, let's do simple math now. They have four eligible receivers, and I've got how many guys to cover them? Seven. Well, for God's sake, he better not find very many spots to throw the ball. But I'm making it feel to the quarterback like it's a blitz. But it's just a line game because it's a fourth guy. Play it again. That's actually our nickel coming off the edge. But we're playing cover three. He's got guys. The mesh is open. But he doesn't, he doesn't have time to get to it. Do you see our will? Play that again, coach. Do you see our will shows the blitz? We call that cha-cha. I don't know why. I hate that name. But he's selling it. Pause it right there. He's selling it. He's leaving and he's coming. We do that. We need to do more of that. Because offensive linemen will try to block what they think is their pressure. Now look at him. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. But we're not, it's not expensive. That's what we want. Go ahead. Get that ball out quick. Then we just got to rally and tackle people. Now he's keeping two backs in. There's a tornado. Do you see the Will linebacker 14? Go back and play that one again if you would, coach. He's coming. Now the D end, the down lineman, he should be working hard to see. C goes B. So the linebacker has to come off C because the DN goes in the wrong gap. Linebacker has to make it right. If the DN would have done what he was told and gone C, 14 stripes his ass through that B gap. Would have knocked him right off his spot. So as you watch these clips, we are not a pressure team. I started out this with we are not a pressure team. But do you think that quarterback feels like he's under pressure? I mean, he's not got a lot of time to deal cards back there. Hence why we picked the ball off so much. Because we got people matching routes all over the place. Balls are getting tipped. People are stepping in front of things. He feels pressure. Like right there, look at that. He thinks drop eight. Oh, they're dropping eight. We're late. 42 was supposed to be coming. And sometimes we do drop eight. Sometimes we just say screw it and we drop them all. Where we're bringing four? Oh my God. 75 to 85% of the time. We're not rushing three. But if, if we're rushing three, it's because we know your quarterback can't pick our coverage apart. And we're going to let him just stand back there and make stupid mistakes. We're going to bring four as much as we possibly can. I mean, a lot. There's games where we'll bring it 90%. Um, if we're bringing five, we think we're not as good as you. That's, that's fundamentally what it comes down to. If we're bringing five, Play that one again, coach. If we're bringing five, we just don't think we're good enough to measure up. Now, pause it right there. How many, roll it back right to the start. How many potential, pull it back just a hair, coach, and then we'll end on this one. How many potential rushers does the offensive line have to account for? Seven. seven. There's seven hats in the box. But how many are coming? Go ahead and play it. There's really four coming. Because the other kid's in stand-up over there. And now I'm just making him put the ball in tight windows. But I'm sitting in zone. As much as you want to consider man match zone. Now that's just straight coming off the edge, right? I sent the end in the B. And I brought the joker off the edge. And he, he is told, do not let that tailback slip you. If he comes to block you, 
hitting. I know that sounds weird, but now you're not giving up screen game, right? Get a piece of him on your way to the quarterback. The quarterback will still feel the pressure. We know we're not going to sack you very much. We want you to get it out of your hands, and we want you to throw it into our coverage where we've got a chance to get pieces of you. We just about got him there. All right, so let's do this. Coach will just let it play, um, but let's go ahead and take our break there, and then we'll switch it over.